Louisa Vaynant has been making headlines ever since it was revealed that she was the young woman who accused Marius Franzman of sexual assault. We're sitting down with her today in her home to hear her account of what happened. Hello. Hello. Now, it's been quite a hectic week for you. Tell me about what's been going on. Um, most of the week I just had interviews, having to speak about what happened um, and just explain my side of the story get everything out there and trying to find the help that I need as well as work mm -hmm. with my lawyers to find strategic ways of looking at this. Tell me about what happened. Take me back to, to the day where the alleged incident happened. Well, um, I can't um, talk about the incident itself a lot as it is in my statement. So um, basically I just met him at my previous workplace and that's where um, he asked me about workers and that's how it came about that I went to work for him. Mm. Now I've been reading mixed reports, mixed things on social media. Some say that you were his PA, uh, some say that you've known him for a while. What, wh were you his PA? Were you going to work for him? No, I wasn't going to work for him as a PA. Um, I was going to work in the hospitality um, project that he had up and coming. So I was going to help him out with that and then do some PR for that hospitality project mm -hmm. as well. So that's basically what I would have been doing for him. It was never going to be a PA working in politics or anything like that. And now I read you were on the way to the ANC's 104th birthday with him when the, when the incident took place. Yes. yes. All right, when, when you think about that day now, sitting down, speaking to news organizations, speaking to journalists, what kind of feelings come up for you? Nausea, actually. I like, feel nauseous every time I think about it or every time I have to recall what happened and people ask me about it. I just feel this pit in my stomach like, sure, this is a chapter which I'm so ready to be done with and to close off, just to be able to move on with my life and like become a better person at the end of the day. You say you feel nausea thinking about it now. Do you remember how you were feeling when it actually happened? I was scared out of my mind because I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know what was happening. Like, is this okay? Like, am I just freaking out or what's going on? Up until I got to a place where I could contact a friend and ask him some advice about the whole situation. So, yeah. What have your family and friends been saying about the situation? Well, most of my friends just like keep me motivated, uplift my spirits and mm. like they don't judge me or anything. They're super supportive and it, I like really appreciate it a lot because it's tough going through all of this. And then family on the other side, they're just thinking about, okay, how are we going to get her through this and how are we going to keep her safe and what can we as a family do mm -hmm. to support her and get her through this. So I've had a lot of support and it's been brilliant. Now, you said you spoke to friends and, and spoke to them about the situation and, and everyone was in agreement that, that this was something that wasn't right. And, and yes. Um, what did you do next? After I spoke to them, mm. like, um, actually, I first took some steps before I told my parents um, when it all happened. I first phoned a friend to ask him some advice because he was an ex-policeman. Um, and he gave me advice. He's the one who told me about hey, this is not right, this is not on you, you shouldn't feel bad, like you did nothing wrong, this is not your fault. Because I was struggling with that, like, what did I do to deserve this? Or did I do anything to, like, make this happen? But I don't understand, I was working for him, like, uh, I never, I, I couldn't understand how it got to that point. And after he, like, gave me that reassurance and he told me exactly what to do to get me to a safest place, he went to my parents and I phoned them while he was there and explained what was going on. And they, like surprisingly, they took it very well. Like, no one freaked out because they knew they had to stay like on point and to help me get back to Cape Town safely because I was alone. Tell me about the nature of your of your job with um, Bronsman. I was just going to be working in the hotel, like mm -hmm. doing some events and PR within the hotel for the, that project that he was like working on. So I, it was nothing like politics or anything or like strictly PA work. It wasn't like that. It was just like if I had to set up a meeting or like get this um, boardroom ready or mm. 
do what, whatever tasks he had for me to do and of course then serve people like you would if you were working at a hotel because it was also a hotel. And how long had you been in this position for? Only for that week. For one week? Yeah, for that week. And had, at any time before the incident happened, was there, were there any other situations where you maybe felt uncomfortable? No. no. It was, everything was so normal. It was like a normal interview you went to, mm -hmm. like this person, except for the fact that you come to the interview, then you find out, okay, this is one of the mentors of our country, and he's actually a leader. And then you're like, oh, okay. But mm -hmm. you keep your calm, you're like, okay, cool, this is still a job you're doing an interview for, so do the interview, fine. Forget about what he's doing in politics, you're not working on the politics. And he made me understand that pretty like clear, because he was also like, you have to understand this is not going to do, to do with politics and this is um, going to work on the hospitality. And it was clearly stipulated between mm. us. Mm. When you found out you were going to be working for such a prominent person, what was going through your mind? On the one side, I was like, um, I didn't actually know what to think because I've never been in that position and I'm not one of these because I don't watch TV a lot and I don't follow the news or anything like that. I prefer to read a book. So I wasn't very much phased with the fact that he was this high person. To me, he was just another human being trying to make an honest living. Mm. It's what I thought. Now, Marius Ronsman has said in a statement that he believes this is politically motivated. Do you have a response to that? This is not politically motivated because I don't work in politics and I've never worked in politics. Just because he's a politician and what he did to me doesn't mean that I'm out to get any other politician or any political like group or anything like that. It's from one person to another. What girl is gonna stand there? You're like 21, you're thinking about, yay, I'm gonna get myself, myself a like, nice 21st dress, I want a nice party, some nice shoes, all of this. Now you're in this situation, you don't get any of those. Now, like, ooh, what girl is gonna stand and think to themselves, hey, you know what, for fun, let's just like um, sabotage our government. Are you kidding? That's so ridiculous. Like, that's like asking for death. Basically, it's like you just out there like playing games with everyone's lives and that's not what I'm doing. It's just this happened with me from him as a human being to one <coughs> other human being and my human rights have been violated by that human without adding any names to that person or what his profession is because it could have been a doctor it could have been a waiter, it could have been anything, he could have yes. been anything else, and then it would still have been, I would still have reported him for what he has done. It's not because he's working for the ANC or that he is this leader. It actually hurts me more that he's working for the ANC and is this leader, because I was thinking to myself, what a brilliant mentor to work for, and then this happens, then I'm like, how? How? No words. That's what happens. Like, none. Like, nothing. You're like flabbergasted. Like, what?